let's go ahead and talk about the M1 MacBook Pro that I've had now for just about 30 days that I, I ha had been using as my live streaming setup. Um, because I wanted to have a completely separate setup for live streaming than what I had been. I had been doing everything on my editing slash music slash everything MacBook Pro. And I wanted to have a separate station with separate things to do. And for the most part, it worked pretty well, um, especially when I was using the, the ATEM Mini. Uh, the A10 Mini is a video device that allows you to put a lot of, like, it's got four different HDMI inputs, and it becomes the thing that switches your video inputs, and it outputs it to the computer. But when I got rid of the A10 Mini, I started to discover some of the, some of the drawbacks of the M1 MacBook Pro, and I would imagine the other the other two m1 machines that are out right now as well um the only other way that i had to get camera footage into the um camera footage into the computer was using um where did they go ah yes elgato cam links now these are fantastic products um but basically it takes an hdmi signal and it put it it injects it as USB into the computer, which makes it then um, be recognized as, as a, um, it makes it be recognized as a, a webcam. So a lot of cameras now are putting software in their own thing that can make that happen. But the problem that I ran into was, I think that these machines, these M1 machines only have, um, only have one USB bus. So if you overload that USB bus, then you, you start to run into problems. And I used to have this happen to me when I, when I used a uh, desktop PC, I it ran, I ran into these problems when I was using the MacBook. but of course the, the MacBook pros of, you know, the previous, whatever, they all had, um, they had at least two USB buses. So what I found is when I tried to put the cam link and another cam link so that I can have two uh, cameras. Like I have a, I have a camera up here that I do top down shots with the, the whole system started to act really funky. And, and I had to, um, I had to, I had to make changes because then it became unreliable in general. Like I would turn on restream here to do a live stream, but it wouldn't pick up my camera. So again, I think this highlights really what is important to understand about um, what is important to understand about these M1 Macs as they exist. Like I keep seeing YouTubers making videos talking about how these machines will take the place of their $7,000 laptops or their, you know, I Justine said that for the most part, one of these machines could take the place of her $80,000 Mac pro. Um, and I'm going to, I'm going to say that 90% of that is correct. 90% of that is correct. You could take this machine and you could use it. And 90% of the time, 100% for probably most users. You would never have any problem. These machines are incredibly fast. They just, you know, they are everything that you ever wanted a laptop to be, like fast to boot up, fast to get things done. Like I, I could export video out of this thing, just like I'd turn, I would turn around and the video would be done. And, you know, we're talking about like gigabytes worth of video rendering happening in seconds. So incredibly fast on that kind of stuff. And, but when it comes to being a, a machine that you need to do more than just that, well, video editing is not basic, but Apple has Final Cut Pro. And if you're using Final Cut Pro, I'm going to imagine that that works pretty well. And now Adobe has, you know, worked out, uh, good versions of their software as well. But when it comes to this kind of stuff, running multiple cameras, 
uh, running multiple monitors. I wanted to run three monitors. This like right up, right up here. I have a, t a teleprompter and it's got a monitor inside, like inside instead of like an iPad or whatever. Um, and, and so I have chat up there right now. When I do videos, I put a teleprompter up there with my, you know, I put a teleprompter program up there with my script. And so there was just a lot of stuff. There was just a lot of stuff that I wanted to do otherwise. So I had this other small monitor that I got over here. Uh, I put a picture of my, of my setup on Twitter earlier today. If you want to follow me on Twitter, Jason T. Lewis, PHT, go over and look at the setup that I put up there. I've got a 27 inch monitor, a 20 inch monitor, a 15 inch monitor, and a seven inch monitor all plugged in to the PC that I'm using for this setup right now. And one downside of these M1 Macs, the, these M1 MacBook Pros is it will only run one other monitor. So you can plug in another monitor. You can get one of the, one of the dongles that Apple sells. And you can plug in another monitor via, via USB, but unless you're using some sort of like digital sort of wireless pairing, you can only do one monitor, which again, for most people would probably be fine. But for me, needing multiple monitors to spread stuff out across my whole, you know, everything else, it was a problem. So ultimately, ultimately, this machine is, is not going to work for me. Same as it, same as the problem was when I was when I tried to use this as an when I tried to use an, a MacBook Mini or a Mac Mini as an audio machine. Um, at the time that it first came out, obviously some stuff wasn't supported. There's still stuff. We're t we're six months out from the from the M1 chips coming out. There is still audio related programs and hardware that don't run um, officially on M1 chips. And in some cases on M1 uh, silicone, period. Um, so some of them will run on Big Sur, but not on the chips. Um, so Apple has totally changed the game when it comes to processing in the computer. I, I mean, these machines are so many leaps and bounds above the machines that were the top level machines that came before them. But... And I, and I feel like this is important, and I'm a little disappointed in a lot of YouTubers for not really emphasizing this. It is still a Gen 1 product, and it still has issues doing things that the other machines could do without a problem. So I think, I mean, this is, uh, so, so people should be wary. They should really try and understand everything about their use case and and what they're going to need to do and whether or not these machines will do them now or do them ever or wait for the next round of of machines which is coming soon coming soon uh, hopefully sooner than later but yeah as much as i love this m1 macbook um if money were not a were not a thing you know i just didn't have to worry about it i was raking in all those youtube bucks then i would keep this because it's a nice computer to just like carry around, et cetera, et cetera. But since I had the iPad and since the iPad like can do most of the things that I would do on this, otherwise I'm going to have to wait for the M one, the, the arm chip max to mature a little bit more or for the higher end machines to come out before I can do all the stuff that I need to do in order to, use these machines. Now, like, like some people are saying here, um, M one X maybe. Yeah. And Franklin says, so essentially I need a professional machine. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, it's, it says it's a pro right now. I, pro re it really just means touch bar, I think. <laughs> and, and it has a fan. It's a touch bar and a fan. Um, never heard the fan. I will say that the absolutely dead quiet machine never gets hot it, it all of the things all of the things that you want your you wanted your laptop to be for the most part 
this thing is, you know, it's cool, not cool as in a Fonzie cool, but cool as in not, uh, not hot to the touch. It is all of those things. And 90% of the time it'll do whatever you need it to do. But that one time that it won't do what you need it to do makes it really problematic. And I, and I want to emphasize this again because the, the YouTube videos that I see from, you know, small and big YouTubers alike give the impression that these machines are like, you know, gifts from gifts from the heavens and they just floated down from the heavens and suddenly can replace every computer that you've ever had and be faster and lighter and cooler and all that kind of stuff. For many people, that may well be the case, but they're, they're not quite ready for prime time. As Hugo says, it's safe to say that a two year migration is, which is what Apple said to begin with, was going to take them two years to totally migrate over to these machines. Um, don't expect these machines to like fully be able to take over the workload of everything that you do if you do anything over and above, you know, light computing tasks, video editing, some anything that Apple has its own software for. Be very cautious about these machines. Now, this is an eight gigabyte model. I didn't feel that I, I didn't find that I needed anything more than eight gigabytes. I did get the 512 gigabytes because the 256, I mean, you just, you only have like a hundred gigabytes left really after you install programs and stuff like that. So this is a 1499 machine. Now you can get the set, you can get the same mini for eight ninety nine, and the minis are amazing, but the problem with the minis is I believe the minis are still constrained to one monitor. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, either here in the chat or down in the comments below, but yeah, um, as much as, as much as I want to, I want to love the new fun thing and I, and I do, and it will be everything that it needs to be. It's not yet. Uh, so this is sort of an update of my video that I did when I first got these things and returned them. Um, I'm going to have to return this one. And, you know, right now I'm using a razor blade 15, a 2020 razor blade 15. And, you know, it's the one that I just did the, uh, the, the video on the whole razor setup. I, I decided to bring some of that setup down here and it's running without a hitch. Like all the video stuff is running without a hitch. Everything is working really well. So, so the mini can do two monitors says Thomas. Good, good. But I mean, it would, well, I guess that makes sense because the mini doesn't have a monitor. So yeah, maybe it's, maybe it's something about how the video signals are, are chopped up and processed that, you know, you need some kind of additional something to do multiple monitors. But I, uh, yeah, so that's, that's the, the end of my M1 Mac experience.